प्रेजेंटेड बाय ईबिक्स कैश हर खुशी के लिए काफी है Good evening and welcome. You're with us here on Business Today. I'm Aapha Bakaya. Here are the headlines tonight. Major indices close in the red. Nifty maintains the 17,300 level. Auto PSU banks realty way while pharma and power stocks gain. Wholesale prices jump to a 12-year high in November. Manufactured goods and food prices take WPI inflation to 14.23%. It's a business today TV exclusive. Nikhil Merchant led consortium wins the race to acquire Reliance Naval. The Anil Ambani company had more than 12,000 crore rupees in debt. Toyota shifts gears with major investment in electric vehicles. Company to invest 35 billion dollars to roll out 30 models in the next 8 years. Netflix ups its game in India after ensuring local product pipeline turns on the heat on the competition by lowering subscription rates by up to 60%. Volatility continuing on the Lal Street markets today recovering nearly all of their intraday losses but still ending in the red caution prevailed amid renewed concerns about the omicron variant nifty declined for a third day in a row falling 43 points and below 17400 sensex down 166 points but managing to stay above 58000 banks and financials dragged the market lower bajaj finance kotak itc bharti airtel among some of the top laggards on the other hand gains in healthcare and oil and gas shares lent some support Top gainers had the likes of Power Grid, Devi's Lab, Axis Bank, Nestle. Anand Rathi Wealth made a stellar debut on the bourses today. The stock listed at a premium of nine percent over its issue price of five hundred and fifty rupees. The company is among the top three mutual fund distributors in India. The issue was entirely an offer for sale exercise by existing shareholders and promoters of the company, and received a decent response from investors. IPO was subscribed a little less than ten times. A consortium led by Mumbai-based industrialist Nikhil Merchant has won the race to acquire the debt-laden Reliance Naval and Engineering, earlier known as Pipa Bhav Shipyard. Sources have told Business Today TV that Hazel Mercantile Private Limited, the consortium backed by Merchant and his partners, emerged as the top bidder by a wide margin. The consortium had earlier offered 2,400 crore rupees for the shipyard and has learned to have revised its bid upwards to 2,700 crore rupees. Reliance Naval owes nearly 12 and a half thousand crore rupees to its creditors, which include SBI, IDBI Bank, and Union Bank of India. Chetan Bhutani got us those details. Chetan, what kind of uh, an expertise and technology does Reliance Naval bring to Hazel Mercantile? Well, you know, Hazel Mercantile stands to greatly benefit from this uh, from this deal because what my sources have been uh, telling me is the fact that uh, Nikhil Merchant, who's almost uh, won the race to acquire Reliance Naval, uh, would be uh, would be using this facility to uh, make frontline warships and submarines, in which is also uh, in synergy to his uh, project LNG project that's coming up adjacent to Reliance Naval. So uh, he'll definitely want to tap into the synergies of uh, both the LNG and the port because Reliance Naval uh, is one of the largest dry dock in the globe in the world. Uh, so definitely in times to come we can expect the consortium uh, would uh, bag reliance naval and greatly benefiting the project of mr nikhil merchant now the successful bid was reportedly 2700 crore rupees which means uh, a near 80% haircut for creditors by when is the coc uh, meeting expected to endorse the winning bid chetan Uh, well you know in times to come we can expect my sources in fact have been telling me that uh, th- this week there could be a major development as far as the committee of creditors w- will be meeting and endorsing the bid uh, in fact you remember there were three bids that were uh, in position first of course by the consortium led by uh, nikhil merchant second by uh, the jindal group and third of of a dubai nri uh, so of course a 2700 crore rupees bid would definitely be favored by the committee of creditors because uh, it's nearly amounting to about 80% uh, haircut by the banks in fact idbi sbi had asked uh, the lenders had asked uh, the 
uh, the, the the bidders to in fact sweeten their bid. So in fact, from 2400 crores bid put in by uh, Nikhil Merchant, the bid was further sweetened to 2700 crore rupees. But unfortunately, 80 percent haircut uh, will have to be undertaken by the lenders. All right, Chetan, thanks so much for joining us uh, with that story. Soaring prices continue to burn a hole in the common man's pocket after retail inflation surged. Now wholesale inflation too has spiked, led by a rise in prices of food, fuel and power. WTPI uh, inflation surged to a 12-year high of 14.23%. Vegetable inflation along with prices of egg and meat hardened in the month of November. Primary articles also saw a rise in prices. Not only have global supply bottlenecks led to an increase in raw material costs, but higher crude oil prices have also put pressure on manufactured goods. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman will begin her pre-budget consultations with different stakeholder groups from Wednesday, 15th of December. All meetings will be held virtually. The first meeting tomorrow afternoon is with experts of agriculture and the agro-processing industry. The budget will be presented on February 1st. In other corporate news, the board of Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail has given in-principle approval to acquire the exclusive online and offline rights to Reebok in the Indian market. This includes purchase of certain assets, including Reebok India's inventory, current assets and liabilities. ABFRL expects to pay 75 to 100 crore rupees for the deal. In the largest ever green energy power purchase agreement of its kind, Adani Green Energy has agreed to supply 4,667 megawatts of green power to the Solar Energy Corporation of India. Adani expects to sign PPAs worth another 2,000 megawatts in the next two to three months. State Bank of India has launched a credit card for fitness enthusiasts. The SBI card Pulse is targeted at customers looking for deals in the health and wellness space. The card has a joining fee, but the applicant gets a fitness smartwatch on paying this fee. The job market has been picking up pace, with India coming out of the clutches of the second COVID wave. But urban unemployment rate has spiked to double digits in the first time in 17 weeks to reach 10.09% for the week ended December 12th. According to CMIE data, the country's overall joblessness rate is also at a nine-week high of 8.53%. With a fall in employment generation under MG, NREGS, rural joblessness also hit a nine-week high at 7.42%. With the pandemic on the decline and signs of normalcy returning, employment across sectors is seeing an uptick. Hiring activity in India has been on a steady recovery this year. So what are the hiring trends? Which sectors are seeing a surge in employment? Business Today's managing editor Siddharth Zarabi had a word with Ashutosh Gupta, country manager at LinkedIn India. Listen in to an excerpt of that conversation. What uh, data from your entire member population in India is telling you with regard to employment and if you can while you are at it also uh, share the latest numbers if you do put them out in terms of how many members uh, you have in the Indian market. So uh, today several pockets of the economy have reopened with many businesses recovering steadily back to prevent pandemic levels of growth. Uh, this has caused a positive impact on the hiring landscape as our data shows that India, India's hiring levels on the platform were 98% higher in September 21 when compared to September 2019, which was pre-pandemic. So again, I repeat, 98% higher than the September 2019 numbers. So hiring has really picked up. Another interesting data which we are seeing is that competition for jobs also has gone down by 44% in October 2009 to 2021. Now, what does it mean that if there's a job available, number of people applying for that job is how we gauge the competition, which has come down for, by 44%, uh, which puts job speakers in a very strong position to negotiate employment terms, right? So two things I have shared. One is the hiring levels are high and the competition for jobs is reducing, right? It's giving more leverage to the uh, job seekers in the market and more opportunities are available and there's less competition. There's one other thing which is happening in the market, which our data is showing that 
the hybrid model, the flexibility is becoming a key requirement for job seekers. So nine on the 10 professionals, when they're seeking jobs, they, they're keen to adopt a hybrid model. They want flexibility in their work-life balance. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't no longer want to be mandated that you have to come to office every day, right? So these are some trends we are seeing in the market. One other thing from company standpoint, what we are seeing is that companies are hiring more specialists to design the future of work in their organizations, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're making a lot of investment in their work, workplace policies. Our recent future of work uh, B2B study shows that nine, and the, nine out of 10 business leaders in India have hired specialists to design stronger workplace initiatives. Uh, so employer, employees are demanding it and now companies are starting to hire people who can deliver that promise. So, so that's what we are seeing in the job market. It's fairly interesting time as both employees and employers are rediscovering the future of work. A price war has erupted in the Indian OTT space with Netflix slashing its subscription rates in a surprise move. The cut interestingly comes on the same day that Amazon hiked prices. So will the opposing strategies work? Let's take a look. We're investing more because we know there's a great success for us uh, ahead in India. This was the Netflix co-founder speaking exclusively to Business Today TV three months ago. On Tuesday, Netflix pushed the envelope in India by slashing its subscription plans for the first time since it entered Indian market in 2016. Its basic plan which allows subscribers to watch its shows in standard definition has been slashed to 199 from 499 a month. The HD plan is now available at 499 a month against 649 rupees earlier. The premium plan with 4K streaming is now at 649 rupees against 799 rupees a month earlier. Importantly, the mobile only plan priced at 199 rupees earlier is now available at 149 rupees. Interestingly, the price cuts seem to have been taken coordinated with the decision of Amazon to hike the subscription price of its Prime Video. Effective Tuesday, Amazon Prime will cost 1,499 against its earlier price of 999 rupees. Even after the price cuts, Netflix still remains the most expensive streaming service in India. Netflix obviously realizes that if they have to grow the business in India, they have to do it through an aggressive acquisition of mobile customers. And I think which is what uh, they're going after. Uh, Amazon's move on the other end uh, is, is very interesting. They're increasing their price uh, to 1,500 rupees a month. Uh, I think Amazon is also looking at Prime, which is a larger offering that has music in it, which has shopping, benefits for their e-commerce customers and for their prime users, plus videos. For the likes of Netflix and other OTT players, it is a race to capture eyeballs in a market where internet access is among the cheapest in the world. However, nearly six years after its entry into India, Netflix still has only a small market share. The streaming giant is expected to have 5.5 million subscribers by the end of this year in comparison to 46 million for Hotstar and 22 million for Amazon Prime Video. The big differentiator could be local content. With Disney plus Hotstar and Sony relying massively on their sports content to drive subscription and Amazon clubbing its shopping experience with the Prime membership, Netflix has bet big on regional language contents, especially in Tamil, Telugu and Malayalam. The company has set aside 3,000 crore rupees for this. The suppliers, which are the producers or the content makers, are the same pool of people. Uh, you have the same applause entertainment supplying content to all of them. You have the same TVF supplying content to each one of them, which finally brings down to the question who can pay the maximum to acquire that content. So. When it comes to content, I think everybody is at, uh, you know, it's a level playing field, which is where the only major disadvantage for Netflix, if you look at 
uh, their offering was their price point. And henceforth, I think this is a fantastic move by uh, the Netflix management to bring down the price point. And I think this will really benefit it, benefit them in the long run. India is one of the last frontiers for the streaming giants. With the Chinese market replete with booby traps, the Indian market is their best bet. Netflix is hoping that with the local content pipeline in place, the price cuts could be the catalyst that attracts the right customers to its platform. Bureau Report, Business Today. Former Indian cricketer Sachin Tendulkar has joined pre-owned car retailing platform Spinny as a strategic investor and lead brand endorser. However, he did not disclose the amount of investment. Earlier this year, Spinney had announced its association with Indian badminton player P.V. Sindhu. Gurugram headquartered Spinney was founded in 2015 and recently became a unicorn with the closing of a $283 million Series E round, which took the total capital raised by the platform to more than $530 million and giving it a valuation of $1.8 billion. In its bid to launch 30 electric vehicles in the next eight years, Toyota has announced it will invest a whopping $35 billion. This will be part of an overall $70 billion investment in green vehicles by the end of the decade. The company has said it's targeting annual sales of 35 lakh EVs every year by 2030, equivalent to around a third of its current global sales. Toyota was a pioneer of hybrid electric vehicles, having launched the Prius in 97. It has, however, been a latecomer to full EVs. The company will also invest $18 billion in battery production by 2030. How's the outlook for the next year, sir? And uh, how many, how, how's the order book looking like? Yeah, <clears throat> during uh, the corona, the pandemic, during the pandemic times, that is Q1, Q2, mm. uh, we didn't uh, uh, do great turnover, but uh, uh, Q3 and Q4, mm. We are expecting uh, uh, good numbers and uh, this year we are targeting to deliver about uh, 400 vehicles, mm -hmm. 400 buses during this particular uh, year and uh, next year would be a great year as far as Electra Green Tech is concerned. Mm -hmm. We will be delivering uh, uh, about 1000 numbers next year. And uh, how about the current order book, how does it look like? Yeah, <clears throat> the current order book is around. Uh, 1600 pluses is uh, um, 1600 plus buses are the current order book mm. and we are uh, hoping to get another 2000 to 2500 buses uh, uh, which are in uh, the where the tenders are in pipeline and uh, we have sub we have given uh, 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 and we have submitted uh, um, off uh, uh, offers uh, even for about uh, even in the other uh, tenders uh, where we will be getting uh, another 2,000 buses. Tell us about the production facility. How is the uh, current production going on? And uh, especially we know that you are going to set up a new plant in Telangana. Uh, where is that uh, reached? And how, how is the current uh, uh, taste looking like? Yeah. Um, we have at present the facility which we have. We can produce about 1,000 buses a year. Okay. And uh, government of Telangana has uh, allocated 150 acres of land nearby Hyderabad. Uh, which got registered uh, 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 a week back. And we are going to construct a world-class manufacturing facility in that 150 acres. And uh, the facility shall have uh, uh, minimal human intervention okay. and it would, it would be completely automated and uh, the best out of best manufacturing practices shall be there in the plant. And we are planning to have 10,000 buses, public trucks, uh, ultimate capacity would be 10,000 buses, public trucks. So that's the plans what we have. And uh, um, uh, we are planning to have uh, uh, the lines for manufacturing bus, trucks, and even three wheelers. In Q4, in the existing facility itself, we want to develop uh, the trucks and we will be conducting the trials during Q4. Mm. Next year, Q1, we want to come out with the commercial production of the trucks. Uh, we are expecting that the truck business would be a great business and 
uh, we feel that uh, it would be the first uh, uh, e-truck in the in in, mm -hmm. in the country. So uh, uh, we have uh, ambitious plans to roll out this product uh, in a big way and to uh, make this uh, product uh, uh, successful. With players like Tesla coming to the Indian market, uh, do you do you see it as a threat? Uh, that that the government of India is offering certain um, certain import duty cuts to uh, international player vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, the domestic players don't get uh, that much advantage, especially in the Fame Two scheme also with the state transport undertakings also uh, you know getting projects for them also be, be, be a little bit disadvantages. So uh, do you think do you consider the Tesla as a threat to you considering it's also electric vehicle company and you're also playing big time. However, the portfolio is different. They're into cars majorly. You're into electric vehicles into uh, three wheelers, two wheelers, and trucks. So, but do you see it as a threat, sir? No, I don't see that uh, uh, Tesla coming in as a threat. Rather, I feel that it's a great opportunity for the country to learn the different uh, new technologies uh, mm. which can de get developed within the uh, country, mm. with which uh, we shall also become one of the uh, good players uh, for uh, uh, electric mobility. Crypto Dogecoin saw a huge spike today after Elon Musk announced that his car company Tesla would accept the digital currency for merchandise. The cryptocurrency jumped more than 30% in trade after Musk tweeted that Tesla would make some merchandise viable with Dodge and see how it goes in the future. Tesla cars, however, will not be sold against the crypto. Elon Musk is an open proponent of cryptos and had asked his followers on Twitter in May this year whether they wanted Tesla to accept uh, Dogecoin. Musk had uh, on Monday been named the 2021 Person of the Year by Time magazine. That's where we leave it on the show today. Thanks so much for watching.